I'm retired, so I have more time than anybody else. Yeah. No. All right, it's six o'clock. We'll call the meeting to order. Paul is on. Mm-hmm. Okay, so first on the agenda is to approve the agenda. Is there anything that needs to be added? I need to move Killington stage race up to under the appointments because Gary Kessler, I can see, is signed on. Okay. And um, so I hadn't, I wasn't sure if he was going to be able to make it, but he is. So I'd like to move that up uh, maybe under Laura Woods. Okay, oh, sounds good. On yours already. Second. <laughs> yeah, no, nope, we're good. You, yeah, I was just I was double checking the um, the executive sessions. Mm -hmm. So, all right, all in favor? Aye. All right, and then we do have some spots available. Um, I know Fran and Bruce Staples, which have not seen them here or online yet. So. What we'll do is just hold their spot if, if they do um, attend. Um, so if, we, if you're good with it, Laura Woods, we can go with you 14 minutes early, if you're okay with that. <laughs> that doesn't happen very often. So. Um, so Laura is interested in becoming the Bethel's tree warden. Let's see, how can, can you make sure we can see her okay? How did you want it, Jean? Did you want a uh, gallery or speak? It's on gallery, we can see everybody. It, yeah, that's what I have it on gallery, but I don't know what. Like I think it's yeah. Zach. Oh, Maybe gotcha. Zach will move his. <clears throat> I know, I'm like, oh, how come it's not working? Mine says. Perfect. Did we. Um, so Laura has expressed interest in the tree warden position. Have we had any other um, um, applications for tree warden? Or? <coughs> no, actually. Um, I had spoken with Carl Russell a good year ago about it after um, our tree warden of many years had, had moved. Mm -hmm. And um, he was a little bit interested at first, but then he was just so busy that he said he didn't think he could take it on. So. Okay. But we received a very nice letter from Laura in the packet, talking about all of her experience and and. Yeah, I had uh, it here, and I don't know where I put it. Oh, it's right there. So she's. You threw me off with the double-sided thing this time. Oh, I was, did I? I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> I had my back in all kinds of different orders. Usually I Kelly. I can't remember where I put it. Usually Kelly does it. it, and I so. But she was out, so I had to do double -sided it. Double-sided so gets it. me every time. That's it. So you're. Anyways, so Laura, do you want to just say hello a little bit about yourself? So I saw this kind of as an opportunity to kind of bring the skills that I already have to more of a local level. Uh, as you might have read in my letter, I'm a, a lake and shoreland ecologist with the state. Uh, and a big part of my job is reviewing projects under the state's Shoreland Protection Act. And that has a lot to do with uh, vegetation and tree management. So I thought maybe these skills would be useful since I definitely, you know, you I, I review uh, statutory language and then apply that to real world situations. So I thought maybe I could bring that to this position. So have you looked on the website? I think I sent you a link, right? So that you were, so okay, I just want, <laughs> We don't want to blindside anybody. There's a, <clears throat> a process to it, of course. And I think there might, I don't know if there was on the website I sent you, but sometimes there's like a little training and maybe either through yeah, them. Yeah. And then usually. Usually the tree warden is a one-year appointment, is that correct? It's appointed annually, right? Yep. Okay, just yep. want to make sure, because sometimes there are some that are appointed every two or three years. Yep, or... no, they're appointed annually, so. Right. Well, we're just thrilled that you're, someone's interested and, and uh, obviously would be willing to take the training when it comes up, and so that's great. Yeah.
Absolutely. Yeah, it's great. The person who did it before was an arborist, so every once in a while the road foreman would call him about his opinion or he'd come and he'd either cut a tree or he'd talk to Alan about it. And then sometimes we had a logger come or whatever, but it was nice to have someone who, you know, we understood so Alan would know, hey, what, how's this tree? Is it in good shape or what's going on or whatever? So it was always nice to have somebody with some expertise to guide you. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'm not, I'm not a Well, it sounds, sounds like the, a good fit. All right. I would move to Laura, what is our new tree work? Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. Welcome to the So, Kelly will send you a letter, you know, that just says that you've been an appointed. She'll, she usually does uh, all the appointment letters. And, um, but that's great. If you have any questions or anything, let us know. And, um, Certainly, um, if you just send me an email, like what's the contact information? I don't believe we have it on the website. I think we make people call us so we don't give out your information, but I'll have to double check and see. But certainly just send me an email and let me know what number and email you'd like people to use to reach out to you. All right, I will do that. Thank you, I, I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you, we, we appreciate you volunteering. <laughs> All right. And second, we have uh, Gary. It's Gary Kessler. Um, I don't know how many years in a row now it's been, but um, the Killington Stage Race. So every year, uh, Gary or somebody else comes to visit us in regards to getting permission for the portion of Bethel. So welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks for um, getting me on the agenda for this evening. Uh, so we haven't been, um, haven't had the race for two years because of COVID, uh, unfortunately. So looking forward to bringing it back after a uh, two year hiatus. Um, the race is um, the day that we would come through Bethel is the May 29th. And I think we, we go on North Road. So basically it's, it's 107 onto North Road uh, into Barnard. And um, we'd have uh, six groups be riding on North Road. They'll start uh, at different times, but I think the first field would probably get to North Road, depending on how fast they ride, starting from Killington at around um, 10 o'clock. And we'd probably, everybody would probably be off by about uh, 1130 or so. So the, the request is to be able to use North Road for that uh, portion of, of the event. Um, we have the, this would be the 10th year that I've organized the race, um, not including the two years that, that of course we didn't have the race. We have the state police uh, that, that uh, lead each field. Uh, we have police uh, at all the intersections. So we would have uh, most likely sheriffs uh, at the intersection at either end of, of um, North Road. And actually in Barnard, there would be several of them. And one field will do North Road twice. Uh, they'll be the first ones to go and they'll be the last ones to come off North Road when they do it on their second lap. They'll come back down 12 or North on 12, back on 107 and then do North Road a second time. So that's the, that's the request. Um, we have uh, the race is a permitted race through uh, USA Cycling, which is the Olympic governing body for cycling in the United States. We have insurance through them, and I would have the town named as, a, as an additional insured. I don't, I mean, again, you're letting me use the road without costs, so I don't really think there's any, um, any real issue there, but I'll, I'll be sure to get that as well. Okay. So, any questions? Any questions from the board? I have one. Uh, the, uh, as I looked at your route, it seemed to me that the, the route took you, took you on 107 and route, uh, what is it, that goes, uh, yeah, comes into Bethel past the fire station, 12. No, mm. River Road. Anyway, into the town, but you, well, in, into the, the town border is out on 107 between Barnard and, and so my question is whether 
the res if the resolution as we have it uh, suggests while you're in Bethel, but is there a different, or is the state responsible for the state highways is, is fundamentally my question, or are we uh, really asking from the time you enter Bethel till the time you leave? Um, it's, it's the state is, um, I have get permission from the state to have, I have a permit that lets the riders ride more than, um, than two abreast on, on state highways. So all the state roads are approved through, I work with VTRANS and the public safety for that. But whenever we go onto, onto town roads, specifically like, like North Road, then um, if it's not a state highway, then I do uh, approach the town about using that town road just to be sure it's okay. That, yes, well, that answers my question. I was just okay. wanting to make sure all our ducks were in a row. I appreciate it. Okay, just need a motion. So you'd make a motion to authorize the chair to sign. It only requires one signature. More trees. More trees. <laughs> Somebody's signing it. Okay, so we just need a motion not only to authorize uh, Killington Sage Race usage of the North Road, but also um, authorization for myself or Therese to sign on behalf. So moved. Okay, all in favor? Aye. All right, thank you. Hopefully it's uh, a good day and we have a good turnout. <laughs> We've had good, yeah, good I appreciate that. I, I hope it will. I appreciate your, your approving it and uh, hopefully we'll, we'll have a good turnout. Um, hoping we'll have around 500 racers and people come from all around the Northeast and from Canada to, to, uh, to do the race. And I think people are looking forward to it after not being able to for several years because of the pandemic. So I know I'm looking forward to it. So thank you very much. I, I appreciate it. And I'd be happy to get any feedback after the event if there's anything we, you think we should do differently or if you hear any complaints from, from people. We do put signs up um, four or five days before the race on the route, just letting people know that there will be a bike race um, on, you know, on, on the Sunday so that residents are, are notified of it that way and try to get things put in the paper as well. And um, I, maybe I, I could put something on Front Porch Forum um, in your area if that, that would also be helpful. So glad to do all those. That's fine, Gary. Or if you have something you want us, we can put it on the on Front Porch Forum too. If you just want to email it to me, then, then we can certainly put it out there for you too. That's no problem. That'd be great. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Yeah. You too, Gary. It's you nice too. to see you. you. All right. Yes. Okay, thanks. You want to uh, fight over signing this? Or? What's that? No, you can sign it. That way I can All yours. We'll be done. It'll be like. Oh. Yeah. Okay, are your, Zach, can, can you hear me right now, Julie? I can hear you. All right, so I just think everybody has to kind of focus on their mic a little bit, maybe when you're gonna motion, so Julie can hear you. The last one with Dave moved it. Lindley seconded it. Did you hear me? No. That's all right. I got. Okay. <laughs> all right. So I don't know, um, we should, even if Fran and Bruce aren't able to make it, we might want to talk about their request. Since you know what it is, she's laid it out pretty well before, so I'm not sure if you still want to talk about that or if you want to wait and have them come. It's up to you. I don't talk about it because I did have a question that they had, so they have somebody staying there currently. Mm -hmm. For five weeks, <clears throat> yep. So are they paying for that a pro Honestly, rate for that Honestly, by the time weeks, I or? prorated it, it was, wasn't gonna be worth my time to make it okay. do. So, um, because you know you had to prorate the rate and they weren't coming until March 7th and the bill that they received was for January. I had to think about this again. I just have to go through this in my head. Just paid it. So it's September, February, October, March, November, December, April. January, February, March. So it'll just so it would be yeah, it would be like a three weeks in March. So um, this is where it becomes like you know, and I think why we were thinking more on the commercial end of things. Why 
why we didn't want to do that is mm -hmm. because we get ourselves, well, I, well, there's two reasons. Well, one reason we had was there were some buildings that it was difficult to split, right? So if you have a five apartment building and you're using one, but not the other four, how do you, how do you split that, right? So that was kind of the reason. But in this case, it's like, I mean, I could see, if, again, like remodeling, it's completely gutted, there's no usage, uh, or no potential usage, I, I guess we should get at. But when you start talking of potential usages, then you get into, well, it's vacant, and we're trying to sell it, but now we got somebody in there, but now, you know, it's like, you know. <clears throat> it's still on you know the market. I mean? But, so, you know, which is, and that had been one of your things with a commercial property mm -hmm. before is, I mean, it's still in the market. So obviously when you have a commercial property, you most likely make arrangements for save money for when your place is vacant. Right. Um, that is one of the things you talked about in the past. But um, yeah, she had emailed me and said, oh, we got this traveling nurse and she's going to come in. And I'm like, all right, look for the 20 bucks or whatever. It's not going to behoove me to go through and adjust. But she was willing to do it. She let me know right away that she could, mm. you know, if I was going to prorate it or anything, which was very nice of her. And um, I had assumed that they would be here. But I think that's always been the challenge is, <clears throat> you know, the vacancy mm. rate makes more sense for a, you know, single family resident. You know, if they do go away for a period of time, an extended period of time, that you can simply go on vacancy rate where when commercially you always have the potential to earn income now. When, when does the current, uh, our current thing start and end? In other words, when, if this yep. is a renewal, when's the renewal date? Um, so it would be the next bill April. we would put is in May, but it would run for April, May, April, May and June. June. So Because we built a month back, the month we're in, and a month ahead. So the one we gave them right now was <laughs> January, February, March. March, yeah. So we so, already gave them three months. But we could uh, say we would... We could extend it for th for three months, but we would begin that three month period when the renter moves out. You could, I mean, um, which would be five weeks. So if it was May, March seventh, so it's, it's, so it it's only a, a couple of weeks. Yeah. So I mean, but you're not talking a lot of money. Probably take more time for me to do the calculation of my salary than it would be <laughs> for to actually make the adjustment and all that. So, um, But I think the, the intent of the board at the time was there was the likely position that they were going to sell, right, in the immediate future, like a month or whatever. And so we, most of the time we haven't done extensions unless they're really Usually if they're remodeling right. something Unless that's going to increase Right, don't have value. the potential to rent it out, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And right now they have the full potential to rent it or sell it or whatever. So, I mean, how, how long does the board allow somebody to do extensions? You know, I, I think we were pretty leaning on three months. Now we're at, you know, going for another three months. You know, they have shown there's potential because there's a visiting nurse in there, you know. Um, and some of the liability comes to the property owner that, you know, invests in a property like that. It's no different than the Arnold Block or anything else. Like, you're investing, you know, into that, and you have the potential to rent it out. What are we um, talking about for a quarter? Well, water and sewer. 75, but it's like, it's, it's like a $50 difference right now or something I, like that, right? Yeah. So they're getting about a 50... Right, because they're still paying about a lot of rates. 70 something. So yeah, so they're getting like, a, let's say round dollar, $50, $50 advantage right. for a quarter. That's on the water, and they have sewer too, right? Yes. Yeah. And I don't know what the sewer I mean, I'm, I'm would be. I'm guesstimating but. that a one EU for them is probably in the $300 range. Yeah, for both. one for EU is bill. 304 yeah, yeah, it's like 304 For everything. Yes. Yeah, for, for water and sewer, mm -hmm. one EU yeah. per quarter. Um, so then if we're talking 75% of that, you know, it's a little less than a hundred dollars. Yeah, I can't tell you. I can bring it 80 up. bucks, something like that, 80 something. Okay. Yeah. No, no. 300 a year would be 75 no, a quarter. No, 300 a quarter. 300 a quarter. Yeah. yeah. Um. I, I don't know. I, <clears throat> I was looking over and I probably would have been more interested to, to visit with them to see, you know, where, where they're at with it. Um, what the market looking like for their, you know, um, 
but the deal we did make was we would give them three months. We never said that we would definitely give six months or nine months. No, or you months, said you'd you know, have to. That there we'd was have a three-month thing, and, we'd and, have and to, yeah. you know, they are not here this evening. And, um, well, we also don't have to make a decision this no? evening. If no, it's... We don't have to. I mean, them out, but you could, you could just honor the... Well, for, the I mean, they commitment could, that the town had done for now, I they mean, could you just, could go back and charge them the full amount and then they could come back to the board again to mm -hmm. to grieve if they wanted to do that way. Because yeah, they can come back. Um, they certainly can. Um, I mean, they can come in the beginning of April, too. I mean, right. you know, I'm not I mean, sure. Last we, time, we may not have sent the bills out. So Because they, the they were in here in February, right, when we did that? Because we were midway through it. So, I mean, Because we went back words and did it mm -hmm. for them so right. yeah so the the normal bill is it looks like we adjusted their bill down to 239.56 from 308.61 yeah, so down to 239.56 so $70 yeah so that's the amount so well what we can do is we don't you don't have to do anything we could just say um well I don't think we had we hadn't made any commitments on a more than a quarter no. so no. we had given them a quarter relief yeah, as, so when they didn't as, come they certainly knew they had you know i, I invited them and sent them the zoom link and everything so yeah so just to sort of counter what chris's commentary on this um coming into this i was sort of thinking that i'd be open to doing another three months but then being clear and capping it at that that you know we, we've provided some extension to give them a little bit of leeway but also at the end of the day, we can't we can't do that endlessly on spec yeah. of a no. property selling or not selling. Because that, if you do it for everybody, we've got other landlords. Right. That's right. Um, so I I would be open to that, but I also I think Chris's point of they have the potential to rent, and they are even in fact in in small amounts, but they are in fact renting it, and so then you know I hear your point that it's not really worth. Your time to go in to get twenty dollars to pro rate, you know. I, mean, I, I, I understand that, but, but but that would be like me saying, you know, I'm gonna whatever. I'm living in New York, and I want I want my you know water bill at home to be like that. However, I'm gonna come back on the weekends, you know. So it's like, you know, I mean, it's kind of like all or nothing, I guess, in my book. But I, I would just say, ba my my thing would be based upon that the deal was three months. Um, and here we are going into the next quarter, and there doesn't seem to be um, the, the follow-up commitment through them mm -hmm. that, you know, there was no commitment to go to a second quarter. So maybe we go back to but, yes. normal charge of the bill, and then if there's a grievance, they can take that back up yes. with the water. But <laughs> if they came in the middle of February, it's only been six or seven weeks. It hasn't been a full oh, three we months. It well, back I know, I one. know, okay. we prorated it back. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying, since we mm -hmm. said we would give you three months, they've had a relatively short period of time to sell it. That doesn't mean it. I'm, I'm just. Well, I think we defer the conversation, defer any decision until we've had a chance to speak with them. We'll invite them again. Or you can give them one meeting. more opportunity to come before. The you know, the board, and we can make a decision then. Well, Two weeks from now isn't going to be much decision. different. We're not, going to, we're not going to extend it until we talk to them. Okay. Yeah. Sure. I think we did make a decision. Well, I know we've been pretty adamant with others in the past that they, too, come before the board, right, to have any type of consideration. So, yeah, I would agree with that. What, Paul, you have anything to add to that? or? No, I think that's, uh, I think that's the move that I would go with, to Defer until they invite them back to the next time. And then um, to go from there, um, yeah, that sounds good to me. All right. I'm kind of leaning towards not renewing it myself, but we can cross that bridge when we get there. Good. So we'll give them one, one yep. more opportunity on the second Monday of April. I don't know what date that is, but... Is? No, it's the 11th. 11th? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> 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 Wasn't me. <laughs> All right. So uh, we will.
move forward with public comment. So if there's anything that is not currently on the agenda that anybody would like to comment or take up with, I see Ellie raising her hand very quickly. Mm -hmm. Now's the time to do it. Ellie, you go first. Uh, I just uh, wanted to say that um, it was very appreciative to the governor, Governor Scott. Um, today, um, Jean, uh, Farron Griffin and myself went to the, an, a wonderful Vorec event. We, um, we were receiving the Vorec grant and um, we were able to, to go to the event. Um, they did a very nice ceremony with um, the Vorec committee speaking. The governor did a wonderful speech. Um, the governor was very personable after they talked and, and um, the, um, let us know all about different things. The governor spoke to, to any recipients one-on-one. Um, 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 -on -one. He asked to know about our projects and, and for each of the recipients to, to, um, to share what they were about. And, um, and Therese, we did the photo. Yes, we did a photo. Uh, it was windy, so my hair wasn't so well. But um, <laughs> so so it was cold and windy. But we did a photo outside, um, and um, and and it was uh, they had a hot cider for us and cinnamon buns, and and we got to talk to representatives um, from the area. Different representatives were here. A representative from Woodstock was there. Um, and uh, Lindley, I met somebody from Danville that had met you or Lily, um, and I uh, got to talk to them. Um, and um, so, uh, so it's exciting. I'm amazed at what other towns and other people are doing um, trailblazing, uh, different things that other towns are doing. It's amazing um, all the different wonderful outdoor projects that Vermont is undergoing. It's, it's just wonderful to see. Well, thank you so much for going. I'm glad that you and Jean and Farron were able to go. I couldn't go and, uh, you know, Rebecca couldn't go. So it was really nice to be able to, when we put it out there, you guys were so quick to say, we'll go. I was so thankful. Um, we'll go as so long as Jean is driving, right? <laughs> that's right. I think that's, I think that's the way the email went. Yeah, so it was great. So thank you. Thank you um, all so much for going. I would like to, to I would like to see it in the record uh, that Bethel, has been granted uh, 331,000 and change. 809. Uh, and so, and we were, uh, one, there were 24 grant recipients, communities. We were the third highest. Nice. And so we, we had, our grant is 1 15th of the total. Uh, and so that's, I, we're, I'm in a very celebrative mood. Mm -hmm. uh, I have just put some uh, a video of the entire program uh, on my uh, Google account and uh, sent a link to Therese. Mm -hmm. And as I am able to refine the pictures somewhat, and do some editing so that we can crop Ellie's hair out and she won't have to, <laughs> <laughs> but we can do that and we'll, uh, but those will be made available and actually replace what is there. Nice. Yeah, no, it's great. Yeah, they didn't want us to announce until, um, you know, the governor, the, until the governor had announced. Yeah, so we knew and we mentioned yeah. it at a steering committee meeting and so people knew, but we, we're asked nice. to keep it to ourselves. So, but it's a great project and sure. um, uh, trails and benches and kiosks and all sorts of fun stuff. And I had talked to um, uh, Rebecca Sanborn Stone. She's helping to pull together the stuff that the state needs from pricing and things that she'd use to build the grant on. And certainly the first number one priority will be finding a someone to manage the grant, which was something we had put money in the grant for, for project management. So that will be 
um, one well, of maybe the we can find we someone on. locally. You That's know, our hope. Mm -hmm. Either a, you know, committee member mm -hmm. or. I mean, it's a paid position, and it's yeah. a lot because it's it's trails. It's, sure, it's yeah. going to be overseeing a lot. It would but be we, nice to have somebody that's a yeah. little bit intimate with the project to oversee. Exactly. You know, you know we'll see. We yeah. have to see what the procurement policy is right now. Um, Rebecca has an email out to them, and she cc'd me to figure out what, you know, because it's federal funds. It, you know, um, or is it federal funds? That's the first one. Because if mm -hmm. it's a pass through from feds, it'll depend. But so that's certainly something that we'll be working on. Good. Um, fairly soon and, so it's exciting and kudos to rebecca mm -hmm. uh the uh new uh, manager director coordinator of the vorek program jackie yes mm -hmm. mentioned that our uh application was the best written application of all of them that's terrific She's so excellent. thank she you Thank you, thank you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Absolutely. Good. Well, thanks, Ellie, for sharing that with us. Do we have anything else public comment-wise? or Julie, do you still have your hand up, or you're all set? She's all set. Okay. You're muted. I think we got it. Oh, I'm all good. Okay. Saw your hand raised, you so I didn't know if it was prior or not. All right, Any, anybody else, public comment? Now's the opportunity. We don't have anybody in front of us, so we will move forward. Um, so we have the uh, Bethel Select Board rules of procedures that we kind of went through the last couple of times and refined a little bit, and tonight was just a motion to adopt them, which we do annually. And we had made some amendments to it this year. And unless anybody has any further comments, Paul or anybody else, uh, just need a motion to approve them. So move. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. All signatures right here. Sign that. <clears throat> Paul, there'll be some stuff to sign if you want to swing by the office tomorrow, if you feel like it. Otherwise, you don't have to. You have enough signatures here, but if you want to, feel free. Well, I'm going to try to set up some time to chat with you a little bit, too. Okay. Sounds good. And next we got <clears throat> a couple of liquor licenses. First, for, first one we have is um, Sambor, a class two liquor license. So I just need a motion to approve that. So moved. Second. Okay, moved by Lindley. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, Aye. ayes have it. <clears throat> Paul's not here to disapprove it. <laughs> and the second one, we have uh, both a first and third class liquor licenses and outdoor consumption permit for Bay Bar. So unless we had any, which I don't think there's any concerns on that. Just need a motion to approve that one as well. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Through that. All right. So there should be. Did you sign that one? It's coming back. Um, yeah, it's gonna take. Okay. Off All right. Here's I tagged these. This so one's got have, a couple, right? Yeah. Three so you have three different ones. Yep. One for each license.
up. And, and then we have a, <clears throat> a couple of coin drops. Um, we got the fire department's request for two coin drops. One is for the 28th of May, and the other one is for the 3rd of September. So unless anybody has any concerns with that, see the motion to approve. On August, August for August. Yeah, the fire department's on the agenda first. You're next. Simmer down now. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so, and again, to go with the motion that, you know, that all requirements in regards to the conditions and the permit applications that are met, you know, the signage and all that. Yeah, stuff. there's 12 conditions listed on the bottom of the permit. Yeah. So. so we had a motion by... I didn't hear one. Nobody yet? Motion by Dave. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Aye. So that's just you right here. Okay, and then we also have <laughs> the recreation committee that has a request for a coin drop on the seventh of August. Just need a motion for that one. Move to approve with the requirements that all conditions on the permit are met. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> Squeak that one out, Ellie. You got lucky. <laughs> I mean, not that it matters. I was just thinking, I was looking at the conditions there. And I know like years ago, we used to have two locations. You know, there was, sometimes we'd do it out in front of, um, you know, the Champlain, before Champlain Farms, and then we moved it up to Church Street. You know, I know this is like our designated spot now. I just, maybe at some point, I don't know if it I don't know should why be like, they chose it. in the conditions we should say it's, you know, only on Church Street only, or, I mean, I know, yeah. Most of the time, everybody knows where it's at, and we do it. But maybe if we ever update the form, maybe we could think about just, you know, that's our one spot or something. And usually the conditions, I think, well, probably some of them came from it the state. It I mean, it, it mentions that. Distance from intersections. So. I mean, they mention on the application Church Street, but, you know, Couldn't. pretty much the only place we allow it to be now is there. Yeah. So. Maybe somebody had a problem with it. Uh, I can't remember what the remember. reason was down in town. I, yeah, because it shouldn't. Wouldn't be on a state highway. Used to do it right out front of Champlain Farms, you know, by the print press, right, yeah. right mm -hmm. by that. Pretty congested area. Yeah, well, so yeah, there's, there's, there's yeah. no traffic pattern around coming and going from that lot, yeah. so it's a little hard. It, it, was, it got very congested. It was when uh, the dog alliance um, did it one year. I forget what the Yeah, that is, there's a lot going on right there. It makes sense. <coughs> okay. Request that mm. in the condition number four, uh, I would request an editorial change from Board of Selectmen to Select Board. I just happened to see I that. Even know this. Well, I mean, there's there's a million places where if we wanted to go down that road, there's, you know, the liquor license has the same thing. The you know, there's a lot well, of places. Well, it's 
Because if you look at the liquor licenses, they say it on there. <clears throat> well, I didn't catch it there, but. No, those come from the state. I'm just saying. You know, so there's, I was just looking on one of these ones from Babe's Bar there that states it on there in the fine print. <clears throat> And I think they originally came from the state, the coin drop application. So yeah, I think it's probably because, all of Yeah, because it comes if you had someone, you know, if you're on a state highway, you have to get state permission. Mm -hmm. So probably, but we'll, I made a note so to have Kelly a, change it. Does, does a copy of this go to the state or anything like that when it's mm -hmm. on no, it? If, no, if, it, if you were on a state highway, you'd have to get, then it would, yes, mm -hmm. and they have to approve it. You have to approve it and they have to approve it, but... Okay. Not in this case. If you were like detouring traffic and stuff, then that's other off from a state highway, then it goes to the state. That's just one of those little things that when we come across it, we should, I believe we should make the change. <coughs> and we have the Conservation Commission's grant Submission requests for rec area bird camp. Yeah, so they want to, they're going to write a small grant to buy the poles and adapters for installation of bluebird houses at Carlos Meadow and to purchase binoculars and bird books, journals for the recreation center bird camp workshop. So um, there's no um, match, matching funds. So. Okay. Do, okay. do we actually need a motion to that, or is it just well, the board? Well, you normally do. You had been doing it in the past because you just wanted to keep track of so many people were writing grants, who had matches, who was up to what. So normally you guys did just to tell them it gave them permission for them to actually go ahead and submit the grant request. Yeah, okay. So Lindley approved it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <clears throat> And White River Alliance requests to use a transfer station for Hazardous Waste Day on the 16th. This is something that you normally get receipt of every year. They they send one to us and one to Royalton as well. Mm -hmm. This part of the probably part of the grant process because you get a reimbursement for your SWIP. So I move approval. Okay, all in favor. Aye. So, motion by Gene. So we're not doing seconds anymore. Not according to the thing. I couldn't remember. <laughs> That's fine. Make it easier. Stole Lindley's thunder. Good luck stopping me. And then we had, you know, unfortunately we got um, uh, Neil Fox. Um, has put in his resignation um, for health officer, and I don't know how many. If, I think he's. I don't know how long he had been doing it, but he told me that had been. He had done it since he was chair of the select board. I was going to say it's got to be every year I've been here, and that's 16 years. So he's been yeah. the health officer in the town for a very long time, and. Yeah, he said that he, um, that was when we chatted on the phone the other day, he said that <clears throat> he went, he's like, I still don't know why I didn't, when I get done chair, I didn't resign from doing this. <laughs> so God bless him. He's done it a long time. And uh, he was, yeah. Chair, not chair. Doesn't Come again? Matter. Yeah. <laughs> so he was, um, he's not sure if he's going to resign also from the, Ambulance board, but he said he'd let me know, and Dave Altrigetti is going to step into that role if Neil feels like he hasn't decided yet. But we had a nice conversation on the 23rd. So we do, you know, that health officer position is open. Um, and I know just from helping out in the past and doing some of the things with Neil that I think it's one of those positions that can be. It can feel like it's very time consuming when you haven't experienced it very long. So, like, I know whenever I was filling in for him because I didn't know a lot of the process, like, it, it would take me, you know, 
minutes or hours worth of reading to make sure that I did the checklist correct and who I sent it to, and, you know. But I'm sure if if you are well educated on 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 that and experienced with it, I'm sure that it goes faster. Um, and it it's kind of one of those things that you know they. Um, you know, one week you can be very busy, and then you might not be busy at all for a month. You know, mm -hmm. so it it kind of goes in spurts. Um, Two things: Do we need to affirm or vote to uh, send a letter of appreciation and accept the resignation? I always just think it's a nice thing to. I, do. Yeah. So I'm just. I don't think it's. Yeah, I don't, don't, normally I don't think suggest, we have to, but we should. I mean, there's been. A I, long I'm time. just asking if we should do that before we talk about how whatever process there is for replacing. And, and the second, my second comment is uh, perhaps we need to discuss what was in uh, Teresa's report about do we want a select board member or whatever to, to step into that role. I would like to have that conversation as well. So I would move. <laughs> that we accept his resignation uh, with uh, sincere recognition and appreciation for the work and his contribution over the years. Okay. Second. Okay, all in favor? You're not going to quit, are you? <laughs> well, I, mean, I, I think a lot, of times this, a lot of times the second is good because if there is any op opposition right. to the motion, you know, I think the second kind of flushes that out, right? Yeah. Go ahead. So. Mm -hmm. Object. Okay. <laughs> um, but, no, I mean, definitely, I mean, it, we talk about, you know, citizens in the town of, you know, in, in you know, I, I call these community service, right? I mean, it's... Absolutely. Um, you know, it, it, and we have so many people that have done things for a very, very long time that, you know, unfortunately, we've had... Um, some people have to resign based on different things here of late and that we've had to fill those holes. And um, I think sometimes we take it for granted what a lot of people in town do for us behind the scenes that we don't see. Um, I think that's but, true. But it's also, you know, a, a great opportunity for somebody else to get involved in the town um, and, help, and, you know, pay their civic duties towards helping <clears> out. <throat> and, um, the health officer one is... is um, um, you know, probably o probably overall one of the busier ones yeah. um, to get involved in. But again, it's uh, and very important. It's very very important, and it you know it's not one of those that you can say, oh, I dedicate ten hours a week to it. it you know, it it's sporadic. You know, winter time is very busy. Um, you have a lot of um, uh, heating um, issues or um, you know tenant owner type disputes. Um, they get flushed out. Um, I think that's the majority of it is yeah. tenant, and then it's pretty tenant disputes. Yeah, no, I, I probably just yeah. about all of them. Mm -hmm. I mean, once in a while you get into a, mm -hmm. somebody eats something bad at a place or something like that, but um, but there, you know, it, it there's a very you know kind of deep formal training on it, and to get not really certified but trained up on it, and, um, and there's a manual, and there's a on the website on the health department website, and. And they do trainings, VLCT mm -hmm. does trainings. But you know, my recommendation is that we get two people. So you have a health officer and a deputy health officer. Obviously, the state statute's clear, as if we don't have a health officer, it automatically falls to the chair of the select board. But it would be nice if, um, you know, Anil did say he would be around. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes he's hard to pin down, but he did say he would happy to help or give opinions or whatever if people you know, just Mentor starting somebody. out, you know, yeah. that he would be happy to give, you know, somebody some two cents. The other thing we talked about is, um, or I mentioned in there was talking about right now it's a stipend and um, it would be, I've never, I have no idea how many hours Neil has spent on it. You know, the reporting didn't come to the town office. So I don't know, you know, if I'm sure that was inadequate. Um, so it may be something where you decide, look, let's, let's set an hourly rate and then put somebody, you know, they could submit a time card or maybe increase the stipend or um, something like that. It's yeah. <clears throat> obviously right now the stipend is set in the town. You know, the town voted on the stipend, but um, if you need to increase it, then, you know, we just would have to find the money somewhere else in the budget. I, uh, I had, after when I read the packet, I, 
I looked at my life and the lives as I understand it of the rest of the select board, uh, I probably have the time because I'm retired and would be willing to serve in that position uh, if that was your desire uh, to have a select board member do that. And uh, before there is any conversation about compensation, I would recuse myself from that conversation or even absent myself uh, from that conversation. So. Uh, and I think it's, you know, looking through this, and I, I think we, we have talked about our compensation packages for all of our appointed officials, you know, here over the last year. And you um, increased some. This and we increased talk. some, and I think the health officer one was definitely one, one of two positions that I could think of that, you know, the $600 stipend is not up so, with the times. So I um, want to emphasize <laughs> yeah. that if you uh, want me to be the health officer, that I want to be absent when you're talking about compensation. We can, uh, that's, a comp that's a conversation, if you want me to do that position, that I shouldn't be here for. Okay. As right now, it's just in the uh, stipend in the town report. Mm -hmm. But one of the things is, so one of the things I think I'd mention in here is that we, obviously we need someone to at least fill the position or, or two people to fill, mm -hmm. at least for now. And we can certainly advertise so that, um, and, you know, since it had just happened, obviously I wasn't sure what everybody wanted to do. So we could certainly advertise too for a health officer and then maybe the person, just because somebody takes it over tonight doesn't necessarily mean you have to do it forever. We right. may find some other right. people that are, but it's in the meantime, we have like three pending or two oh, possible. Well, that's, that's the other, the, my <clears throat> other concern is that uh, we've got some things happening in our family that will make it so that where I would be able to best spend my time in the next two weeks would be in training and looking at, at manuals and so on, rather than actually looking at particular cases. Yeah. So that would be a, an understanding that at least for the next two weeks and pr mm -hmm. probably, uh, but. Yeah, it makes sense. Somebody, whoever comes on has to get caught up. So that makes so, total sense, Gene. Yeah. And it takes it takes some time. I mean, usually, the um, the instances that happen are usually it takes a couple of days to actually. Well, I I understand get that. I'm just I'm time just, with the person, and I'm, then it becomes a process right. over time to go but, through. So, it, so I'm. But no, you're right. Yeah. I'm willing. I'm I'm willing to to spend the time in the next mm -hmm. two weeks to do that. Nice. That's true. I mean, so, I, I like I like the way that you know, like Therese was talking, and you know. I mean, we obviously need a health officer. I mean, that's right. No, but I think I, I like if we the find idea. Somebody else. That's <laughs> great. I like the idea of call the health officer, a deputy, or whatever, Have all the people. different titles. But having a two-person, a backup, a good strong backup, I think um, uh, really works. Um, you know, because you never know. You know, somebody goes out of town or whatever, and. Uh, and, 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 and right now it defaults to a person, which is the select board chair, which, you know, I understand why they do that. But at the same time, it's like, uh, doesn't mean I'm qualified to do it. You know what I mean? So it's like, you know, somebody spends a lot of time going through this. And if, if they're out, then the select board chair falls on it. That doesn't mean the select board chair is... is, is um, they just statutorily Right, it doesn't, it doesn't it mean somebody. I'm qualified to go do this, you know. Um, I, I did go through some of the training there a couple of years ago to help out Neil. But, you know, so it's kind of a, one of those old things. But where you all see the need. Yeah, I, I mean, I guess my opinion is that it doesn't matter to me if it's a select board member or a member of the community. I mean, it's always nice to have somebody, a member of the community, yeah. get involved and do their civic duties. But as we know, there's not a lot of people banging down the door to yeah. do things. So it'd be great, at least um, if you had somebody tonight because we need one. Mm -hmm. And then we can, or maybe two, depending what you get tonight. And then we can advertise and then see. Sure. We're going, but at least it covers everybody's bases and it doesn't dump it all on one person. It's saying, okay. 
Maybe yeah. you do every other, or you can, you know, something like but that. But I would strongly suggest, e even if we do have a board member on it for now or on yeah. it for the long term, that we do find that second. Oh, I agree. Um, yeah. You know, not give up on the process. and No, no. Or find, find a primary, and, yeah. and the board member could become yeah. the assistant. I right. mean, that's a... Right. Yep. And along those lines, I think that in, in thinking about this, it's such an important position, but I also think that we'd be better suited, and maybe it's that each of us as board members reaches out to one or two people in the community that we feel might be well suited for this and talks to them directly about, hey, would you be willing to step up and do this either as the health officer or as, or as a deputy health officer and just see, see what we get. I know when we were looking before, I had asked a few people um, just for names and recommendations. So like I have a few people I'm ready to ask and you know, would be happy to reach out to. And I think regardless, <coughs> having at least two people then gives us that backup. And if we get three or four, then good for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know if there's a, li if there's a limit <laughs> on how many deputies you can have. I don't know. Paul, I'll have to ask. what do you think? Well, I think that's a good idea. I think we should advertise it uh, as well as having somebody, uh, you know, if Gene's interested in doing it, I've kind of thrown it around myself. But, you know, it's a, a good idea to have somebody in there, but then seek out some other folks from the citizenry and, have good backup plan because we, we never really had that backup plan and there's a lot more involved in it. I, I went through the manual today and there's quite a bit, there's quite a bit to it. There's everything from, from septic systems to plumbing to animal control to insects. You, know, you have to know an awful lot about building uh, regulations and requirements. So it's quite a bit to it. So I think that's a good plan. So if we, um, so right now, Therese, to appoint somebody, mm -hmm. Neil, Neil, Neil's term would have ended in March of next year, is that right? right? Mm -hmm. So we would just be appointing somebody until next March. I don't know. That's a, I'm right? not sure. I don't know that. I'm not sure if it's an automatically a three-year term, but they can always resign. And, right. Um, but I mean, normally, if it was let's say, a normally select board it's a position, three year. it's only for or I know tree but warden. I, let's say it would only be for the remainder of the year, right? That's true. If it's a municipally elected position, but mm. since this is appointed, I don't mm. know the answer. So of how long it's going to be, um, but certainly, um, you know. But anyway, we'll find out. But certainly, um, it it could be the full three years. I just don't know. I didn't think to. Ask because you're right. Normally, under elect rules, we would just fulfill. You know, someone would fill the remaining service. But I don't know the answer to that. And that that's another way to approach it at this immediate moment. Yeah. Is to say we're going to appoint somebody for a year. Mm-hmm. I agree with that. And we if, if we find somebody before the end of that year, great. And if we don't. We've right. got a year to find somebody. Well, and the other thing, too, I can tell you is, is you're going to, I'll fill out this form, but in the end, someone's getting a letter from the state and it's going to tell you whether you're serving a year or three wow. years. <laughs> I don't think that that's their, you know, state rule. And I just don't know the answer off the top of my head. So, um, but either way, even if it yeah. says you have your point for three years, you can still resign. Yeah. Once you found another person, you would just, someone could resign. But um, I mean, I, I guess the only, the only thing that I would, the concern I would, uh, I guess the way I look at um, committees or appointments is, you know, we, you know, as the board, as the select board, we try to delegate these other responsibilities to other members of the community to get involved, right? That's their opportunity. So if we do appoint, let's say, a board member or two, right, it look, just throwing it out there, what does that mean for an identity of the, you know, let's say Lynn Lee is talking to somebody and they say, yeah, I'd really like to do that two weeks from now, you know. I'd say praise God. Yeah. Well, well, I guess, I guess <laughs> I mean, that's I'm my question. Yeah. No, I'm if, serious. If, mm -hmm. if uh, I know Paul's got some interest mm -hmm. as well as Gene, so I'm just throwing this out there. So let's, let's say both of you are representing us yes. on the health end of things and we do have somebody from outside that wants to do it. I mean, is this, are you guys looking at it as a temporary thing? Like, 
I'm doing it to help out, or is this something like I would like to do this permanently? Or you know, I guess that would be my question because I, um, I personally would like to see people from outside the select well, I'm, board do I'm it. I'm doing it because it's a contribution to the community that I could make, and uh, because it needs to be filled, mm -hmm. we need to have somebody now. Uh, it, it's a combination of that, but I'm also willing to step back or to move to a different, from the officer to assistant or whatever, mm -hmm. and or to be completely devoid of it as, as the opportunities. Uh, and, and Paul, it would be, uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, uh, an officer, deputy, or whatever, uh, if you were willing at this point in on this, quote, emergency basis, uh, there could be more of a let's share the responsibility rather than one person do it all. Well, and I think that's the next question I had is I'm pretty sure that you can only have one health officer, right? And yeah, then everybody else would be a but deputy exactly, or something, yeah. how, right? we, how we work together could be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The only other option you have, I suppose, is that you could, is it will automatically fall to Chris now, and we could advertise it, and you all could reach out to several people, and Chris could just be the health officer for two weeks, and then you may have found an, a, a citizen candidate. Um, so you could also do that is, is you know... So one, of, one, of the, one of the situations also is that the training that you'd have to go through for this position, it's not, it's not just two weeks. I mean, it, there's a lot more to it. And to do that on a temporary basis and, and have people coming in and out um, over the long term, I don't think is a good solution. I think we should take the time and establish a, somebody who wants to do it you know, on a full-time basis with a, a deputy and they could do the training and, and move along through instead of doing it kind of piecemeal, if you will. Um, I think that we, we should take the time to do it. Um, you know, have Chris be the, the health officer temporarily, advertise it, get some names, go through the process like we would normally do because the training is it, you know, there's a lot more to the training for that position than, than two weeks um, of, of, of uh, training. So do we want to, um, do we want to table this until the 11th meeting and then make a decision as a board on the 11th? You know, that gives a little bit of time if anybody else wants to come forward. We can forward. put an ad in the newspaper. So, so you'd basically mm -hmm. just automatically be He's statutorily position. now, as of yeah. the 23rd, the minute not. Neil resigned, it was automatically Chris. Right. <laughs> I was trying Don't to worry, I'm going to go pick Neil up. He's coming with me. <laughs> <laughs> I have a truck. I don't, it doesn't matter where he's at. I'm picking him up. <laughs> We're good to go. Well, <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Um, yeah, and I think if we don't get any serious interest, then we look at Paul or Jean. Or both. Or, or both. Yeah. yeah, okay. Does that sound good, Paul? Is that? Yeah. Okay. What? Yeah, I like Lindley's eye. Yeah. Well, don't put my name on this. Just default. I'll be all over their website again. Yeah, I like the idea of everybody defaults. of everybody point of everybody um, reaching out to a few people that they know. I think that's nice because the personal connection sure. is always and is always good. I'll reach out to um, Neil as well and yeah. see um, yeah. how he may he, may or if he wants to do any mentoring. He um, said that he would be available. Um, sure. You know, by phone, he can't do the inspections, and he did mm -hmm. say in his email that's in your packet that he would be willing yeah. to do a little bit. And um, you know, he can be difficult to reach at times. Yeah, I'll um, reach out to him. But he said, um, and he also gave us a name for the uh, local fire 
warden too, who or Jay Moody, who's yeah. well, not fire warden, fire inspector, who's helped him and mm -hmm. and things. So um, okay. All right. So we'll have to. In the meantime, it's just going to automatically default to Chris. Paul so. brought up a really good point mm -hmm. earlier too, which um, just in in each of our thinking of who we're reaching out to, that there's quite a diversity of of skill sets here, and so if we're if if we're given the opportunity to be choosy and we're able to pick somebody who's got that building background, but then somebody else who's got more of the health background, you know, it'd be nice to kind of think about a diversity of people and not just going from one angle or another. And then hopefully we're able to pick people that complement each other well. Mm -hmm. So then even if one is the officer, they can call on the other person and say, hey, can you consult with me on this issue? It's not my yeah. area of expertise. Yeah, I think that for Neil it was good in the sense he, he did insurance, so he understood you know, that aspect and um, other towns I've done, we've seen, I had, there was a doctor for a while, did it for a long time, then a, mm. a visiting nurse took it over and, um, but everybody, you know, and everybody has, you know, handles it a little bit differently or just a different role, but, um, but no, so that's fine. So it automatically will default to Chris by yeah. statute and we'll, um, I'll put it out there and I'll ask, we'll get an ad in the paper and, um, I and then if you guys- I was thinking I had all people. this extra time and what was I gonna yeah. do with it? Uh -huh. Oh, yep, and from Porch Forum, yep. So I have advertised, so okay. we'll do from Porch Forum, we'll do so Facebook. That, that, that's a good approach. Website, and, um, but I really appreciate you willing to step up, Gene. That's very kind. Well, then maybe we can talk about compensation issues next. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah, after that. Mm -hmm. uh, Okay. So the 2022 appointments, um, I just gave you all. Oh, you have some letters here. Um, one from Sandy Farrell. She's interested in being the trustee of public funds. There was a letter in there from um, Scott Putney for Human Services Advisory Board. Um, the rest of these are all um, people who have Kelly reached out to and they've agreed to um, renew, you know, carry on doing mm -hmm. what they're doing already. There's a couple we hadn't heard from, so you'll do a few more appointments in April. Um, but these are the ones that we had. So um, aside from the trustee of public funds, I think the other ones could all be one motion. Um, the trustee should be separate because that's an elected position. Teresa, I didn't see the letter from Scott and I Oh, oh, huh. Yeah, there was. I don't know what I did with it. I um, I thought when I did the packet that I scanned it. It's not a double cider. Oh, you know what? I bet that I put it. Um, I had to give Kelly back the list of people we hadn't heard from, so maybe I it's inadvertently in put his letter in there because I don't see it in my packet right now either. But he wrote a nice letter. He'd attended one of the meetings, at least one, right? And he'd been on it before, and he was asked to be appointed. Yeah. So. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I'm um, so yes. I apologize. I had it. It must be in the other stuff I gave back to Kelly, um, but everybody else is, you know, doing the same thing they did before. Looks like we have red lights in the background. Yeah, I know. I saw that. I know. <laughs> I was like looking like. There's something I know. This? I like, don't know why. What is going on? Doing that. Do we need to leave the building? Flickering, but <laughs> I don't know. And that was looking like. Is it? Is it like a fan light or something? I know. I don't know. I can I figure don't know it out. Why it's doing it? But. Okay. So one motion we can do to, to set the appointments for, all the above except for the trustee of public funds, yes. as so laid out in our, agenda. So moved. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, and then the second one is we would need a motion uh, to appoint Sandy Farrell as the trustee of public funds. Until the March 2023 town meeting election. Well, so. you can only appoint until then anyways, right? Well, I guess, yeah, I guess technically, yeah, because she's, the other ones are, um, this was an elected position, obviously, since Carol passed away. Mm -hmm. It's the remainder, it's... Not, I don't even know if it's the remainder of his term, but Whoops. but she wrote a nice note, and Paul had spoken with her, and she'd be a perfect fit. Okay. Did um, did we move that? No. No. Paul did. Paul did. 
Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 One quick comment. Do we, is any thought been given to uh, a couple of these positions and maybe we don't need any more? I'm not sure you need the wear of coal and wood or fence viewers or pound keepers anymore. Um, I'd have to go back and look at the statue, but some people, I, some people like being reappointed to those positions. I think they're old Vermont ones, and I think okay, some people like the fence viewers. That is that is so legal that mm -hmm. no, there's nobody there that has the expertise to be. A fence oh, viewer. I know. Yep. And um, but so I'd, I'd have to look, up, but I, I think it's fence viewers, and I think wear of coal and wood. You may not have to anymore, but I think some towns just do it out of tradition because it used to be, um, there was one more, wasn't there? Inspector of, I can't remember what now, but um, anyways, so uh, yeah, so in the future we could look at that for sure. Yeah, we don't need them. Right. I remember seeing a memo and I think I can't remember which ones. I don't I'm know. pretty it's sure it was way of coal and wood, to, uh, and I think the fence to, uh, viewers were not needed anymore. Throw out is, uh, I don't know, it's kind of a old Vermont tradition, I guess. Mm -hmm. I didn't know they weighed wood. Hmm? <laughs> what? I don't know they ever weighed wood. It was all measured. I know. I think it was inspector of yeah. wood and weigher of coal, I think, was the original. Mm-hmm. I actually had a guy once call about that. Somebody, the guy went out because he was mad. He didn't think he got a full cord of wood. <laughs> and uh, so luckily it was the guy from Johnson Lumber who was the ins inspector of wood. <laughs> and uh, so he went out and was like, you know, either he, he got a Count full the cord or he didn't or whatever. <laughs> it but it was you. pretty funny, oh, yeah. That's what I'll do. What it does <laughs> make you, it was funny. I'll call them out next year and I'll be like, I don't think I have a cord here. Can you stack right. it for me and that's tell me? Right. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Okay. It all planned out now. <laughs> oh. All right. Anything yeah. further on the appointments? The town manager report. I think that uh, we have left. Wastewater two license. Yep. I was just scroll scrolling through to see what was in here. I see the yeah. Yep. So Richard did That's on the twenty fourth. He yeah. just. Um, Okay, his first try. His, he did, which is actually unusual. They usually say it takes the guy who has been doing the training, Wayne Graham, said, and most people don't pass on the first time. So he did. So he's fully nice. licensed, and so which is great. I'm very excited about that. Richard and I actually met with a gentleman today um, <clears throat> before I came who is a certified wastewater operator from a, obviously a much larger plant in Hartford, and he's willing to come on and do every other weekend and cover Richard's vacations. So that's something that we'd been looking for, and we were looking for someone with more experience, obviously, than Richard, not less. This gentleman has over 25 years of experience. He came highly recommended. Um, Richard and I met him tonight, nice guy, and um, he's what he'll do is he, when Richard goes away in August for a week. This gentleman will is going to take a week off from his town and <clears throat> cover for us. And uh, he's also willing, if needed, to get his... Uh, he was water certified at one point, but he hadn't been in a while, but he's willing to get his water certification again if we need it. And hmm. So we had a good conversation. He's going to shadow Richard for a little while. Um, he, they utilize the pumps that we want to replace with the, the American Rescue Plan money because the pump died last week so Richard had to rebuild a pump and um, so it was nice and he it was funny he came to the plant today and and was looking around and we were and uh, he I said you know probably seems like the stone ages compared to some of the stuff they had in Hartfield he said well I haven't seen a UV light like that in a while he said so we had a good mm. conversation so I think it could be a really good uh, partnership uh, for Richard and obviously we need someone to work every other weekend so he's not always working and um now have you decided in regards to um will there be any restructuring i know like before when greg was here we did the half position for mm -hmm. water sewer came about yeah between, you know yeah we, the we utility did the position. position yeah i talked to richard and i talked to um mm -hmm. alan about it and um and 
I was never a fan of that situation anyways, but we, what we've decided is I have an ad out right now or be in this week's paper for someone for the summer to mow. So they'll do the mowing work with Richard so that they can flush hydrants and, um, you know, test valves and, or, and clean suck out valves, put in the foam mm -hmm. inserts and do that and handle the mowing. Uh, so that would be, that'll be good. Obviously, no, because it's seasonal, there's no benefits and certainly right. can't guarantee hours in a specific week. Uh, it'll what was the restrictions on that 18? 18, 18 because okay. they're going to be in the road. And um, if Richard had a water main break or something, you know, this person would be able to be there, um, be a runner or do whatever. So, um, and as we know too, as the summer goes on, it becomes more, you know, August and drought like mm -hmm. that we wouldn't be mowing all the time. So I had said specifically in the ad, the job description that there's not a necessarily a guarantee of hours. I think it will be full time, but it would be 30 or more because on a good day, it takes them so long to mow. There's also mm -hmm. some fence maintenance at some of the parks and some odds and ends to be done. Um, we've kind of used that position a little bit to do certain things if we need stuff done around the office or someplace. How are, how are cemeteries maintained? Mode? Cemeteries go out to bid and they are maintained. Um, we actually have that bid out and we'll um, award it on the 8th. That's under the guise of the uh, cemetery, cemetery commissioner. Board, yeah. yeah. So that's Cecil. So we put out a new, an RFP and, and um, so we'll see, we bid out the three of the cemeteries separately. So. Um, so this person just mows, you know, town property. Who's the guidance counselor at the high school now? The moth. Nicola it, moth. Is it still? I mean, might be, might not get anything out of it, but mm -hmm. may may want to just forward the information to over to the high school, and maybe they have a graduating senior that wants something to do for the summer before they leave, or yeah. you know, might get something. I mean, yeah. I know we used to have two individuals in the town I lived in used to mow lawns and. Yeah. Paint fences and I've already. Work I mean, I have. And, you know. I have one application already, and um, but that's so I talked to Alan about doing that, and then we would bring in someone to do the winter, another seasonal position, just like Paul Feeney is now. We would bring somebody else in for seasonal, um, for the sure. so, you know, we just talked about it to see how it would work, and instead of having this one person, um, kind of full time, especially now, mm -hmm. um, it's not like Richard is, you know isn't a few years away from retirement. So it's um, we're gonna try something else a little differently and see how it works. Okay. Great. Trying to be a little more efficient with it, <clears throat> but we'll see how it works out. All right. So that's the plan for now. But yeah, so congratulations to Richard. It was awesome. I was really happy for him and, and uh, he was very excited. So he had his test, his pump broke down. He really had, <laughs> he, had yeah. a, he had a week, that's for sure. Um, the next one is the, our April 11th meeting is uh, certainly the first part. It's going to be dedicated to just uh, the first part of American Rescue Plan money. Um, you know, we have talked about using American Rescue Plan money for um, sewer, you know, upgrades and infrastructure. Um, obviously, when we first got the money, it was either broadband, sewer, or water. And so we know we have some need, significant need. Um, at, you know, some of these pumps are really old now, 35 years, and not, they're not gonna go forever. And the price tag on them is, if we can do it now with American Rescue Plan money, it's gonna be something we wanna really look at. But, so trying to get you know some public input on how to spend the money. Mm -hmm. um, there will be, it's, they've kind of kept you know freeing up the rules a little bit too. Um, it looks like we may be even be able to use some of the money towards like the town garage and things like that. So, um, you know, it's exciting because it's $500,000, but, would putting some of this money towards things like replacing the pumps, will that lower the price tag on the subsequent phases of our water sewer replacement, or are those separate? Like, is it just curious how we've yeah. sort of It's separate because the, the phase two of the water right now, I think we're, I want to say 1.6 or 1.8 million, had nothing to do with sewer plant at all. Right. So, um, and, and there was no money set aside over the years for the pumps. Um, you know, I mean, it was the whole thing, the problem with the rates weren't right, that whole situation, which mm -hmm. we've obviously have tackled. So, no, this would be, um, so by taking care of, I mean, some of the needs I'm aware of are the pumps, that we have a generator that we need under replacement we need, we're getting pricing on right now under the um, Church Street Bridge, um, possibly a, a roof, I have to see, on the on the plant itself. I mean, and that's just sewer plant need. 
like that that we could think of. So um, mm -hmm. obviously, uh, you know, we we probably could use some of the money towards um, offsetting maybe the bond, but mm -hmm. it's tough because if we get a good deal with DWSRF funding, you might not need to do that, but we all know we would be looking for money to pay to buy down a bond for the town garage because I had 600,000 and, you know, the three engineers like are like a million. Yeah. So, um, yeah. you know, and it, while it's wonderful that you have $500,000, but, you know, I had a meeting about this a few weeks ago and, and um, with the with two rivers and there was a group of us at met and we kind of love because we could spend that like that you know and that's just the need now it's like you sure. want to see something if it's like four million you know then we can really get some stuff done but they've also loosened the parameters on the money so that's good um, but the good news about putting it into the sewer system is obviously it helps downtown businesses it helps um, stabilize your rate increases um, because you know these pumps are you're talking like a hundred you know, fifteen hundred twenty-five thousand dollars. So, boy, it's, it's all it's all good in the long yeah, run. Yeah, it is. It's, you're right. It yeah. is. It's all we have a list of all of the need, and if it you know chalks it off, there's no match, no funding, and no interest rate. It's it's a great thing. It's just really so, laying out our needs. So we'll we'll discuss that more thoroughly. Yep, next, on the eleventh. I just okay. wanted to put it out there so people knew that we were going to be talking about American Rescue Plan money sure. um, on the eleventh, and we'll okay. certainly. Um, Put it out there and try to advertise them more so people understand what we're what okay. we're doing with it or what we're doing with some of it <laughs> and um Ready? but that i think is it okay select board meeting minutes from the 14th just need a motion to approve those unless there's any uh, revisions Move to approve. Oh, Paul's got things. Okay, Paul made the motion. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Ready? So the rest of the stuff in the packet, there's a notice of, viol of alleged violation um, just regarding a property that needs some cleanup. Mm -hmm. There's DRB minutes. Um, planning Commission minutes, Forward Festival minutes, Energy minutes, um, BRTS Joint Board minutes, um, all sorts of stuff in the packet for minutes. Planning Commission minutes. So. Okay. It looks like the Ford Festival has set the time, uh, date for the 24th of September. I think so. And, all right. Anything else to come before the board before we Head into executive session. Owen, are you cold, bored, all the above? I'm like, you have this very stoic look on your face through the whole meeting. I'm like, is he watching a video in the background or what? Oh, I wondered. I would say you looked kind of bundled up, but it is. Hopefully spring really shows up here eventually. Yeah. Be nice. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. All right. Time for an energy audit. Yeah. Amen. Mm. All right. So we'll just, uh, I'll just need a motion to enter executive session to discuss the annual evaluation of the town manager. Um, as well as to discuss confidential contract negotiations with the town of Royalton um, in regards to our interlocal agreement. So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. 7.24. So, 7.24 p.m. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Bye, Thanks everybody. For Bye. Thanks for Paul coming. Don't go anywhere. <laughs>